Hey golfers, it's Thomas Campbell, Master Club Fitter at Second Swing. Today I have an exciting test. I'm going to compare the evolution of golf irons. Today I'm going to be testing the Ping irons from all the way from the Ping I2 up till the new G425 irons here too. So I'm going to test six different models. So starting off, we're going to start with the Ping I2. That particular model came out in kind of the 1980s through the early 1900s. Next, we're going to test the Ping I3 Oversize. So that came out kind of around about 99, 2000. We're going to also test the Ping G5. That came out around about 2005. We're going to also compare the Ping G20. That came out right around about 2011. Also thrown in the mix is going to be the Ping G that came out around about 2016. And then as I mentioned, the new Ping G425 irons that just came out here in 2021. So this is going to be a really exciting test. I'm going to kind of compare the differences between these irons. We're going to talk about forgiveness. We're definitely going to probably talk about loft because there's been quite the change in loft from irons as golf clubs have evolved. So speaking of those loft differences, the Ping I2, so the Ping I2 back in the 80s and, and 90s, the loft on that 7 iron was 36 degrees. The 4 iron loft was around about 25 degrees. Go all the way through, we'll notice how the loft starts to kind of go down with these 7 irons. And today with the Ping G425, the loft on the 7 iron is 30 degrees and the loft on the four iron is 20 and a half degrees. So at the end, what I'll also do is I'll hit some, maybe I'll compare the Ping I2 three iron versus the Ping G425 four iron, since we know the lofts are very, very similar between those two. And we'll talk about the differences there as well. So I'm excited to test those. I'm gonna hit five shots with each model. I'm gonna hit with the Titus Pro V1X with the silver dot face it up. I'm excited to really hit some shots. Before I do that, do ask if you do subscribe to this channel, make sure to click that red subscription button down there on the bottom right. Also, while you're at it, if you give us a comment or two, we'd really appreciate it. Well, let's, uh, let's test the evolution of golf irons. So I'm going to begin with the Ping I2 7 iron. For today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and have my swing speed right around about 80 miles an hour with each club. I think it's good to try and have that swing speed the exact same. We all know after seeing a lot of my content now that my normal seven iron swing speed is about 88 miles an hour. Usually ball goes pretty far, but I want to test and showcase kind of what your typical amateur, average amateur club speed would be for a seven iron that's usually around 80 miles an hour. So I'm gonna usually around about 75 to 80, 80 miles an hour. So I'm gonna really try and swing around about that 80 mile an hour mark as we kind of test the differences between these irons. I just got done hitting 30 shots with these six different models. I hit five shots with each one. One thing I noticed was the kind of transition from say the, the Ping G to the Ping G20. That's where I started to notice a little bit more forgiveness and a little bit more 
distance in the irons. We, we notice there's a bit of a change in the, in the loss between those models. And we'll talk about that here in a second there too. So let's see club speed. So my club speed on average range from 80 to 81. So did a pretty good job of trying to be right around about 80 miles an hour. Um, so be a good test to be able to compare ball speed. So going to rank ball speed from the highest ball speed to the lowest and see how everything kind of checks out. So the Ping G425, that was the, if we look here, we can see the Ping G425 had the highest ball speed at 120.6. Um, that club has the least amount of loft at 30 degrees of loft on it with the seven iron. Ping G would be next in line at 120.3. Ping G20, 120. Ping G5, 116. And Ping I2, 116. And Ping I3, oversize 112. Now the Ping I3, oversize, I had that one miss at here that I definitely did miss. And that just kind of shows the level of forgiveness in, on the older irons there as well. But the other ones were not too bad up there. But you can see a general trend on the older the model, the least amount of ball speed, the newer the model, the higher the amount of ball speed. And that's pretty much directly related to the loft on the club. Seven iron for the Ping G425 has got 30 degrees of loft. And the Ping I2, we notice the ball speed was about 116. That had 36 degrees of loft on it there too. So we picked up about five miles an hour ball speed with having close to, close to five miles an hour less loft on the club there, if we're going to compare the, the loft differences. Uh, if we look across at spin rate, so if we were going to rank the spin from kind of the, the highest to the lowest, the club that had the least amount of loft, the Ping G4, G425, had the lowest amount of spin at 44.50 on average. Uh, if we scroll down, we can see here I3 oversized, the Ping G420, Ping G kind of in that about around about the 5,000 RPM mark. Uh, and then we've got the, the Ping I2 and the Ping G5. Those were a little bit higher. The Ping G5 definitely surprised me with regards to the spin rate being the highest amount. I would have expected it to be the Ping I2, but the Ping G5 did spin about 500 RPMs higher than the Ping 2, which was in second place. Um, considering the Ping G5's got about three degrees more loft on it than the Ping I2. If we look at distance. So let's look at carry distance and total distance. So if we look here, carry distance, the Ping G425 did carry 180 yards on average. Um, Ping G175, Ping G20, 170, basically 175 again. I2 was 167, Ping G5, 165, and then the Ping I3 oversize, that miss it in there, I've got dropped a little bit there as well. But you can definitely see the I3 oversized, the Ping G5, and the Ping I2 kind of hovering around about that one, 165 to 167 kind of carry distance. And then we started to kind of see that, that, in, that jump and increase. So we can see these last three models here. Now the Ping G20, so going from the Ping G5 to the Ping G20, there was a two degree increment in loft difference there. And that could be definitely, could definitely related to why the ball was going about eight or nine yards further carry distance with the Ping G20 there as well. So we switched from 34 to the 32 degree jump there with the G20. The Ping G also had a little bit less loft and then the Ping G25 at 30 degrees of loft there, carry distance went up by about five yards over the Ping G20 and the, and the Ping G there as well. So carry distance, looking on the right here, dispersion, you can kind of see the dispersion differences um, you can see how the Ping G25 was kind of carrying the further, that's the green dots. Uh, and then you can kind of see how where the, uh, the Ping G5, the Ping I3 oversized, and the Ping I, the purple, the yellow circle, and the white circle, just kind of a little bit, little bit shorter for regards to carry distance. We switch this to total distance now. So total distance with the Ping G25 having a little less spin, um, it's going to roll out just a little bit more, so you know it's total 193 total distance, um, and then the shortest total distance was kind of the, the I2, the Ping G5, and the Ping I3 oversized. They were all right around about 173 in total distance there. So you definitely see that that change in 
transition and technology right around about the, the Ping G5 to the Ping G20. So kind of right around about that, uh, I guess the 2005 to 2011 mark, essentially. So we had a lot of different models come out, different manufacturers pushing the envelope with regards to distance and forgiveness. So that's where we started seeing technology advancements in golf equipment there as, as well, which is awesome as a club fitter, because today we've got so many great options there to kind of compare the differences across the board there as well. I want to touch on height briefly. So if you look here at height, you'll notice Ping G5, Ping I2, Ping G425, kind of right around about 90 feet in the air. That's important because the Ping G5 does have less loft on it, but it's good to know that it still flies fairly high. It actually was 89 feet in the air, and it also was the highest consistency as well. So it was flying fairly high and consistently fairly high. So that's kind of showing the level of forgiveness if we go across the board there. We're seeing from 80 to about 95, mile, 95 feet in the air, which is how far I was hitting um, these seven irons. Now keep in mind, this is with swing speed around about uh, 80 miles an hour. If I was going to swing at my normal speed, I would definitely hit it a little bit higher and give me a little bit of stopping power there as well. Speaking of that stopping power, you can see kind of landing angle here, kind of ranges from about 42 and a half up to about 47. That's important, right around that 45 mark is good for kind of like a, a seven iron as well. And then we don't need to look at my swing numbers. They're going to be very, very similar. I want to just take a look at uh, the dynamic loft and see how that follows trends with regards to less loft or, or more loft on the club. You can see the Ping G20, the Ping G, the Ping G425, uh, right around about 20 degrees of dynamic loft. So those were your stronger lofted clubs, a little more forgi forgiving clubs there as well. And then we can kind of see the, the models before. So we can see the I3 oversized, the Ping I2, and the Ping G5 kind of between 22 and 23 degrees with dynamic loft. So definitely loft was influencing the distance of the club was going. I want to finish off. I mentioned I wanted to do a long iron test. So to finally finish off, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the Ping I2 3 iron versus the Ping G425 4 iron. The reason why at 3 and the 4 iron is because the loft difference is only separated by one degree. Believe it or not, the Ping G425 4 iron still has one degree more loft on it than the I2 3 iron. So let's hit a couple more shots with the 4 iron just to kind of finish off before we uh, take, a, take a quick look at that and then finish up today. Ping I2 3 iron, I believe, has 21 and a half degrees of loft. And as I mentioned, the Ping G425 4 iron's got 20 and a half degrees of loft. So let's kind of compare the differences here. Those five shots with the Ping I2 3 iron, my club speed was right, just hovering just under 91 miles an hour. So as I'm hitting this club, I'm going to try and do the exact same club speed, and we'll take a look at numbers. So finishing up, comparing 4 iron and G425 versus 3 iron I2, you can kind of notice here the kind of difference. We notice that my club speed was very, very similar, 91.1 versus 90.8. What I will say is when I was hitting the G, Ping G425, I felt like I had to slow my swing down a little bit more to get my swing speed up, as opposed to with the I2, I feel like I was swinging almost at 100%. I feel like I was swinging about 80% with this particular model. So we definitely kind of try to keep the same swing speed, but there was more potential for more speed with the Ping G425. Uh, one thing I kind of noticed was I had a couple of really bad shots with the Ping G425. I wanted to, I can definitely show the level of forgiveness there. So if we take a look here at shots 39 and 40, so we'll notice how my ball speed dropped to 132 and 131 with those particular shots. But then if we take a look at the dispersion pattern, we can still see how it was nice and consistent overall with regards to kind of the, the total distance overall. So that's, that's important there to note. Even though that I had a couple of miss hits, 
I still got away with it. So the forgiveness level is there for sure with, um, with the Ping G425. And even with those two missets, we'll notice that my carry distance was still six yards further with the Ping G425. Total distance, the Ping G425 just went just a little bit further overall. And keep in mind, there were a couple of missets in there as well. Big, most important piece to that when talking about those missets is if we take a look at the height that my missets were. So mentioned shots 39 and 40. The height on those still were hovering between 65 and 70 feet in the air. If we take a look at the Ping I2, the average height that I hit the ball in the air was 62 feet in the air. So my missets with the Ping G425 were better than my averages with the I2 with regards to height. And then that's going to give me a lot better landing angle to stop the ball on the green and get the ball to carry a little bit further. Um, so really kind of interesting, yeah, about 12 feet higher in the air with the Ping G425 than the, than the I2. So that's definitely showing the level of kind of forgiveness and importance of getting the ball up in the air with newer technology there as well. And then finally, we can look at the dispersion pattern. You can see the purple circle, which is well inside the red circle. The purple circle was the Ping G425. Flew very, very straight, where the uh, I2 was a little bit more east to west with regards to dispersion. So this is really, this is a fun test. Uh, really excited always to test old equipment versus new equipment. Most important thing here is to work with a club fitter, kind of work with on budget. So sometimes the second swing, we do have a lot of used clubs. Want to make sure we fit you into used clubs that fit your specific style there as well. Or if you're looking at new clubs, we do offer new custom order fittings as well if you're looking to spend a little bit more as well. One other thing to keep in mind is if you do have any trades, it really does help to offset the prices on new or used clubs. So bring in your trades. We can definitely help offset the price and get you into some new equipment. Hope you really enjoyed this content. Thanks for watching.